what do you guys do exactly for those who haven't heard? Yeah, we set up a AI adaptive platform and provide really personalized learning contents to students. Mm -hmm. And like students in remote area, uh, really rural area, they don't have good quality of the teachers. So we can um, give them the platform and they can learn, they can, you know, learn the same contents as like Beijing, Shanghai students. So how, just tell me how the AI works and how smart is it in particular? Is mm. that you take a test and then you yep. try to see what is your weakness, exactly. let's say if it's in, in math, and then how granular does it get after that? Does it mean like you have to work on your calculus mm. or your algebra? I mean, break it down for us a little bit more. Yeah, sure. Um, we do assessment first and find out your weakness and strengths. And the system will only let you to learn the weaknesses only. So you can skip um, the you know strengths. But in China, in most of the schools, you have to learn everything, right? So uh, in our system, it's really precisely. Only learn the parts that you don't know. And then if you have some knowledge that maybe is like from past few years and the system will track back to the root knowledge points that you didn't master. And then after you have mastered that knowledge points, we'll jump back to the current level. Uh, Jolene, Tom McKenzie here in Beijing. Uh, I have a three-year-old. I, I want to restrict her access to screen time, not give her more screen time. Am I just a Luddite? <laughs> it's really hard to... <laughs> um, so, well, so I'm just, Jolene, I'm just, so I'm asking, I'm asking in terms of screen time for children, I mean, this is a debate for parents, how much access yeah. to give their children in terms of screen time. So h how do you justify putting kids in front of screens all day uh, where, when many parents want to make sure that they're getting access to good teachers, good quality teachers and getting more outside play? Well, in our system, our aim is to reduce the time of the study because um, the student spent too much time on study. So uh, from our database, it shows the student can have like 80% uh, free time by learning uh, really precisely learning contents. Well, with um, computer, it's not like playing games. There will be a human teacher helping the students. So it's just one to two hours and it's really short. And after that, the students can play. So we don't want to put the students in front of screen all the time. We want to free up their time and do other creativity things, yeah. Yeah, and you, you have two million students signed up so far. What are your projections for sign-ups by the end of the year? And how many of those are paid sign-ups? Um, about 20% of them, they are paid. And uh, we have about 2,000 learning centers so far. So by end of this year, should be about 4,000 learning centers. And by the end of next year, should be about 6,000 learning centers. Um, then our students will be probably uh, 4 million um, students online. Well, what's behind the physical centers? Isn't the business model framed in a way that you can use AI at home? What's yeah, the need for actually the online, we, offline? Actually, we have two business models. One is the offline physical location learning centers, and the other one is online. You can choose, like for example, in Tianjin City, you can choose either from, from home learning online, or you can go to the learning centers. Because some students, they can you know, control themselves, and they can stay home. And some students, or some parents, they prefer to stay in an atmosphere, and teachers there, students there, and they can learn from each other. But the system is the same. It's just a matter of atmosphere, how you feel comfortable. And, and the vision, is it meant to eventually replace teachers? Nope, it's to help the teachers. There are some parts that AI technology can definitely help the teachers, but there are some parts AI cannot replace the teachers, like emotional encouragement, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Those kind of things, feelings. We definitely, need a, uh, we definitely need human teachers to work together with AI. Yeah, we, we just had a story out on Bloomberg about how it's even getting tough for the brightest students in China mm -hmm. to find a job due to the slowing economy. How are you changing the curriculum or the algorithms that you have to adapt to this uncertain environment? Sure. Uh, oh, actually, in our system, we don't teach the knowledge points only because we think that's necessary. But in the future, when they graduate, the uh, skills, abilities, models of thinking are more important. So inside of our curriculum, we are building up like um, MCM system, which is called model of thinking, capacity, and methodology. So we hope the students can learn skills before they go to the public, before they go to the work. The social skills. Social, social skills, skills, right, yeah. 
and we are going to have classes of how to create your I mean, how to increase your imagination and creativity mm. things, yeah. yeah. I get that when I'm bored, actually. Just not doing anything, you increase your imagination. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. Uh, final question, I mean, you've, you guys have been around since 2014. Yes. Uh, so you've, you, you have a track record already of, of teaching students. As Tom was pointing out, you already have a couple of million. Have you seen proof or evidence that they perform better than those who hadn't used the AI tool? Yes, definitely. How much? Um, about How much better? Well, as long as the students have stayed in our system for like over three months, there are about 80% of the students, they, their scores are increased and they have better interest in, uh, in study and mm. their concentration is going up and the time of the study reduced. And we have so many really obvious examples like from Lhasa, from Tibet, mm. from Xinjiang, which is really far from the center of the China. Mm. The students over there, they have scores increased. Most important, they are more engaged in the study. Last question about regulations. We've seen a lot of changes in the yeah. education sector. How do you see this evolving and how does it impact your business in any way? Yeah, it's really crucial for the educational industry because the time of study needs to be reduced by the government. There's a regulation. You, you can't study after like 8.30. But for our uh, personalized adaptive learning, it's uh, good news because within a certain amount of time, you need to study really, really precisely. You can't waste your time. So for us, it's better.